Okay, thank you very much. So um, I'm Rashmi Patel. I want to present to you my study investigating negative symptoms in schizophrenia using a text mining approach. So first of all, some background. What is schizophrenia? Well, schizophrenia is a chronic mental illness affecting about 1% of the population, and it's characterized by positive symptoms such as delusions and hallucinations, but also negative symptoms. And these are things like lack of interest, social withdrawal, flattened emotions, and we're beginning to realize that it's actually these symptoms which are responsible for the greatest burden of illness and disability in schizophrenia. But the issue is they're quite hard to measure in clinical practice, so there's a real need to develop better ways of detecting these symptoms. And one approach to take is something called natural language processing, which is a text mining method uh, which helps uh, facilitate automatic extraction of information from free text documents. And this technique has been around for a little while and has been used in media and publishing, but could equally be used to free text documents from electronic health records. So here's an example of uh, some software developed by the University of Sheffield, uh, a set of obstetric notes, and the software has been um, coded to extract particular clinical parameters like uh, level of dilatation, blood pressure, membrane status, using a series of, of rules. Um, you can extend this process by using a technique called machine learning. And in essence, machine learning is the process by which you develop a computer algorithm based on data which is classified by human. So in the uh, case of NLP, there are three steps. The first step is to identify relevant documents using keywords, uh, and in this case, words like affect, motivation, and so forth. And then a human annotator reads these documents which have been extracted and classifies them according to the presence or absence of a symptom or, or if it's irrelevant. These annotated documents then form the basis of training data uh, for a machine learning algorithm to develop an automated tool to extract these symptoms. So we applied this NLP approach uh, to a source of clinical data, the BRC case register, which is an anonymized uh, uh, record of all, all the electronic health records of patients uh, in the South London and Maudsley Trust, over 200,000 patients. So this is an enormous resource of clinical data which lends itself to a machine learning approach. As you can imagine, um, there's very strict data security. All of the um, analyses are performed behind a secure firewall. Uh, the patients are never identi identified. Um, they are able to opt out of inclusion into this case register. Um, and all of the projects are, have to be approved by a patient-led ethics committee. Um, and that's very important. So we selected just over 7,600 patients with schizophrenia um, aged over 16, receiving care in 2011. Um, and we developed uh, 10 different NLP applications uh, for these, uh, a series of negative symptoms here, using a machine learning approach. Um, we looked at these individually and then also put them into a composite score uh, from 0 to 10, weighting each uh, symptom equally. And the outcomes we looked at were um, whether patients were admitted to hospital uh, during 2011. For those patients that were admitted and discharged, whether they got readmitted within 12 months. Um, and for those patients who were admitted, how long they were admitted. Uh, and we performed multivariable analyses, adjusting for demographic variables and other um, uh, clinical and social variables, uh, activities of daily, daily living, social impairment, and, and so forth. Uh, so here are the results. First of all, um, it was a success. We were able to develop an automatic tool to extract these negative symptoms with a high degree of precision, over 80%. And you can see here uh, that these symptoms are quite common, uh, particularly poor motivation and blunted or flattened effect. And 56% uh, of patients had at least one symptom documented, uh, which is more than we anticipated, actually. And when we look at the relationship with clinical outcomes, you can see here this graph shows the percentage of patients who were admitted in blue or readmitted in red and the number of negative symptoms that, that were documented. And you can see the more negative symptoms, the greater the percentage of, of patients who are admitted or readmitted. Um, and similarly, uh, with the duration of hospital stay, patients with more, more negative symptoms had longer hospital admissions. Um, this was corroborated with the multivariable analyses, which showed that uh, uh, patients had an increased likelihood of hospital admission and readmission, and that the presence of negative symptoms was associated with a lengthening of hospital stay by around 20 days. 
and this is after adjustment for all of the uh, covariates I described earlier. So um, we can see as a result of this work uh, that natural language processing can be used to extract uh, quite subtle clinical constructs from electronic health records uh, and the negative symptoms that, that we identified were common um, and were associated with poorer clinical outcomes. Uh, but I think this work actually goes beyond uh, just negative symptoms in, in schizophrenia because, of course, it can be applied uh, to any routinely recorded clinical data. Um, and the, the machine learning approach allows algorithms to be developed to extract quite subtle clinical constructs in a way which, um, using a rule-based approach, is, is quite difficult to do. But the real benefit is the fact that once you've developed one of these applications, you can apply it to a very large volume of clinical data. Um, this sample, over 7,000 patients, is an order of magnitude greater than any other observational study uh, that's been performed uh, looking at negative symptoms. Uh, and of course, this, this isn't restricted to mental health. Um, the same principle could be applied to electronic health records in other areas of medicine, surgery, and primary care. Um, it could be used to help facilitate observational studies like the one I presented to you today, uh, gathering large volumes of, of data for cohort studies, um, but also uh, consenting patients to being contacted for, for medical research. Uh, patients who consent uh, to, to allowing you to look at their medical records, you could use these applications to try and screen patients who could be eligible for particular interventions um, specific for uh, particular symptoms. Um, furthermore, these, these types of um, algorithms could be used to help individual patient-level clinical decision-making. So if you had an intervention uh, which was particularly good for negative symptoms, you could run the algorithm on, on one patient's set of notes and work out whether or not that they've got these symptoms. Um, finally, uh, we're working on a project looking at developing methods to detect adverse drug reactions automatically from uh, free text electronic records. So there's a, a huge uh, scope here uh, for the application of this method. Um, and I just want to end by saying, I know there's been a lot of controversy in the media recently about the use of anonymized clinical data. Um, well, I hope that this presentation has shown uh, some of the uh, applications uh, of, of this, these sorts of data. Um, I think that uh, to be able to extract data from a case register of over 200,000 patients and use it to develop an automatic tool to extract quite subtle clinical symptoms is really groundbreaking and I think it's vital that we continue to support th this type of research. So I'd just like to end um, by thanking uh, my colleagues, particularly Robert Stewart and colleagues in the BRC Nucleus, uh, and my supervisor, Philip McGuire, and the Medical Research Council for funding my work. Thank you very much. Many thanks for presenting this innovative approach. Sure, lots of questions, Debbie. Yes, I mean, first of all, thank you for demonstrating what you can do with these big databases in a controlled way in a very difficult condition. Now, as a statistician, I want to ask you about your logistic regressions, yes. but it's a sort of broad question. You've gone from 200,000 down to 8,000 patients, which I assume is the relevant ones, but then some of your analyses were apparently on less than 2,000 patients, and I just wonder what kind of selection is going on there yeah. and whether it matters, and I know you only had 15 minutes. Yeah, that, so that's uh, purely to do with the sample. So only a proportion were admitted to hospital, mm -hmm. uh, around 1,600, and similarly only a, only a proportion were readmitted to hospital after discharge. So that's why those samples are smaller. Um, but uh, the, the original sample of 7,000, we used the whole sample to look at initial admission to hospital, whether patients were admitted. And do you have much problem with missing data? Um, this yeah, kind of so, uh, stuff? That, yes, um, there, are, um, th there are no problems with the actual natural language processing because we just work with the data that's there. But the covariates, there are, there are some missing data and we've run sensitivity analyses, uh, both including these as regressors and removing them and the magnitude and direction of the odds ratios and beta coefficients remains the same. So we, we've, we've done sensitivity analysis. Okay, first. thank you. <laughs> Would you think it's, it's fair to say that uh, because obviously the 10 points you selected, the 10 words yeah, that in the exploratory stage, would you think it's fair to say that this is sort of like a reflection of um, 
you know, the perception of severity of disease, which drives then the interviewer or the clinical person yeah. to document in more words? Because yes. obviously it's not a tick-off sheet. You don't give no. a score out of 10. So what are your thoughts on that? So that's, yeah, that's a very interesting question. Um, so first of all, those 10 items were selected based on a research rating scale called the positive and negative syndrome scale. And we use that as a basis to, to, to develop this application. But of course, the clinicians who are writing the notes were agnostic to the fact that a researcher was going to come two years later and look at the notes and try to look at negative symptoms. And I think the fact that, it was, that we were able to extract these from routinely recorded data where clinicians were not specifically seeking uh, to, to look at these symptoms, uh, I think tells us that, that there's a real scope to, to broaden this and, and look, look at other uh, quite subtle clinical constructs. Question from the back and then on, down here, just in the back. Well, I'll just shout. Um, the microphone is coming. <laughs> What you lose by tax mining is the context of the information. So, for example, you pick out the word low mood, words low mood, and you could very easily change that by adding more or less in front of it. So is there a way of, uh, of making sure that you're getting the specific context of the information as well, or are you missing that completely? Yes, there is a way to do that. So the way you would do that is you'd apply these applications in stages and filters. So you might have an application to identify negative symptoms. You could then take that um, corpus of data and then apply finer uh, tools in order to uh, detect the content of those negative symptoms. So you do it in a filtered approach. Thank you. I thought it was very interesting, very impressive. But could you just tell me what you learned that you didn't know when you started to study? Yes. Well, the, <laughs> the main thing is the fact that it's actually possible to do this. We didn't know that we could apply this technique um, and be able to get an automated algorithm to, to extract symptoms of, of, of mental illness. That, I think, is, is really uh, the most important outcome of the study, um, and I think leads on to lots of other projects looking at other constructs and, and applying this method elsewhere. I mean, the idea would certainly be to take it a step fur further, isn't it? If you have now identified people who have like the most severest outcome or so, then you could, could you ask then your machine learning approach um, to look for frequently used terms in these patients' notes yes, that yeah. differentiate them from others? So that's what we're trying to do. So I'm now working on a project to look at other symptom domains, positive symptoms, manic symptoms. Um, the NIMH uh, in Washington are now moving to a, a form of mental health research looking at symptom domains rather than sort of disease classification. So what we're trying to do is to find different ways of classifying disease based on these domains um, and developing tools using natural language processing to identify these themes uh, at a patient level. Yeah, I mean, machine learning is always big if it can um, find the unexpected. Yes. Yeah, like sort of if you could, yes. and also related to laboratory findings, you always find they have a low potassium if they have such and such. And so, you know, like sort of, yes. yeah, it's a non-rationalized. Yeah. Okay, many thanks. Time's Thank up you. again. Thank you.